بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على قتلتهم وأعدائهم أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen My name is Ali Al-Habib Coming live to you from the minor land of Fedak. Welcome to the Ali Al Habib show. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very important research regarding the infamous woman by the name of Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr. And through this research, we will be responding or addressing some points by a known da'i in Speaker's Corner and in other platforms who refers to himself as Muhammad Hijab. However, for mostly, we must, we must emphasize on the aim of this research. This research that is going to be presented, which will tackle sensitive topics and sensitive bullet points, let's call them, which may cause distress to some of, to some of our Sunni brethren or Bakri brethren. They may get offended by such research presented. They may get upset. However, the aim of this research, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is merely to exonerate our holy prophets, blessings be upon him and his progeny, from the lies of Aisha, daughter of Abi Bakr. This woman who has caused such harm to Islam and the Muslims by her lies and fabrications which she spread against our prophets, blessings be upon him and his progeny, causing a deviation like no other. Our aim is to respond to the likes to the likes of the orientalists or the islamophobes worldwide these orient these orientalists or orientalists who orientalists who mustashriqin who have sought to asperse our prophets and asperse Islam with the, re, with the narrations of Aisha, with the narrations of Aisha and the likes of her. I see that it, that it is important to present to you such topics and for the world to know the narrations to which Aisha fabricated against our Prophet's blessings be upon him and his progeny. For mostly, I will be presenting to you, ladies and gentlemen, a series of tweets by the individual named Muhammad Hijab. I ask the Honorable Director to present some of the tweets which Muhammad Hijab expressed his concern regarding a fatwa, a verdict given by Albani, Nasir al-Din al-Albani. He stated, can someone explain to me if it is the case Albani is saying that sucking a non-mahram's woman's breast to get milk is allowed? 
and the nipple is not fitna. And if so, can we all admit this is one of the greatest mistakes of the noble sheikh? Here he says that this is a mistake. This verdict given by Albani with regards to adult breastfeeding, which is an innovation by Aisha, which Islam is absolutely innocent of, is a huge mistake. The understanding of this fatwa is a huge mistake. And he goes on to say, so if Shaykhuna Al-Fadil Al-Albani can make a humongous mistake, such as this believing a grown man can suck the breast of a woman and he thinks this will not cause fitna. Why couldn't he praise, why couldn't his praise of Sheikh Rabi' al-Madkhali and his tabdi' on other scholars, scholars on others not also be a mistake or not also mistake like this? And here someone responded to him. Someone goes on to respond to him by the name of Omar Shanta or Shantala. And he says, I would love to see you refute the proof that Sheikh Albani uses to support his views on this matter. And here Muhammad Hijab goes on a um, goes on tangents basically, not uh, directly responding to the point, making some uh, let's say in inappropriate propositions as you can see on the t on the video if or uh, uh, as you can see on the uh, screen where he tries to make a qiyas uh, with regards to a woman uh, and another woman behaving inappropriately or doing a certain action which i will not mention on this show individuals if they, if they want they can read he starts to make uh, far propositions and far and inappropriate things rather. Going on tangents, upset and not getting what he wants, he actually goes on to say, to put up a challenge for those who are trying to defend Albani by saying, can I, you know, I'm going to read it uh, directly so people can know. Can I, he says, this is Muhammad Hijab's words, can I suck your wife's, uh, you know, um, breast, breast, let's call it, to make her mahram. He makes this proposition. Which is, of course, uh, a, a, a reasonable man who has uh, the qualities of behaving reasonably would not make such proposition, especially with all these non-Muslims that are on your channel. These Islamophobes who attack Islam day in and day out. See such behavior, such immature behavior, childish behavior, coming from an own speaker who happened to boost into fame behave in this way, and he's representing Islam here. And if I, if I were to look at him, if I were to look at his, his tweets right now, would I say, mashallah, he has dignified Islam. Islam is being presented or represented in its correct form and in its correct way. He is, he's worthy of being a representative of Islam, behaving in such childish, immature, inappropriate ways. After seeing that he was not able to, uh, after he got embarrassed basically, after he was told off, he then went to retract. He then went to retract some of the tweets he presented. And he made an apology on Twitter saying that these 
mental episodes in Jaza Tabir were due to a medication that I've taken and other things that are not worthy of us responding to. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be today presenting this research regarding the ruling of Aisha. And I will be tackling the understanding of this research or the dreadful interpretations of this narrations or of this of these narrations that Aisha is narrating. And I will also rectify and make clear our stance from such hideous scandalous, immoral actions and practices. And of course, the line is open for you to call, ladies and gentlemen. I am more than happy to receive your calls and your input on this research and on these events. I present to you, and I, or I launch with you this research in the name of Allah. In Sahih Muslim, Umm Salama asked Aisha, a boy at the threshold of puberty enters upon you. Whilst I, whilst I would dislike him to enter upon me. Umm Salama, Umm al Mu'mineen, Haqqa, truly the mothers of the believers, or the mother of the believers. What is not known about Umm Salama is that she stood and she had a very staunch stand against Aisha and her innovations. Umm Salama goes to Aisha and says a boy that a boy at, at the threshold of puberty, meaning at the start of puberty, at the beginning of the puberty, al ghulam al-Aifa, where lust is immense. A boy at the at this threshold of puberty enters upon you. Aisha making, letting men enter upon her and boys enter upon her. Whilst I would dislike him to enter upon me, I would not like these boys, youth, teenaged, to enter upon me. Aisha responded, don't you see in Allah's Messenger a model for you? The wife of Abu Hudayfa said to the Messenger of Allah, Salim enters upon me and he is a grown man. And I can't see or I can and I can see Abu Hudayfa is uncomfortable with it. She sees when Salim enters upon her, Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa enters upon her, she sees distress in the face of her husband, Abu Hudayfa. So she went to the Prophet, telling him or informing him of this matter. Whereupon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, supposedly said, Suckle him so that he may enter upon you. This is according to Aisha. Aisha is narrating that a grown man with a beard, a grown man who was in the battles of Badr, was in the battle of Badr and Uhud, days go past to him going back into uh, infancy and suckling from a mammary gland. This is the narrations of Aisha. Also in Sahih Muslim, we have a caller who is with me? Mo, I'm going to call him Muhammad. Um, welcome brother Muhammad, you're on the show. 
Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Welcome, brother. You're on the show. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mo. Um, I'm from the United States. Okay. So, I grew up um, Sunni, but in the past few months, I've been studying, you know, the different sects and, you know, trying to gain a better understanding. And I just had a question regarding, like, the view of um, Aisha, according to the Ithna Ashari side. So, um, my main question is, how do you guys view Aisha? We, from a Shia standpoint, view Aisha as a hypocrite, dear brother, as stated in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah asked her to repent or ordered her to repent. And we did not receive any form of even a weak narration of her to repenting or declaring her repentance. Aisha, their brother, our Imams, alayhim salam, specifically Imam al Sadiq, alayhi salam, the sixth Imam of the Shia, when a group from Basra entered upon him and said, What do you say about the people of the camel? meaning the battle of the camel, the known battle between Aisha, Talha and Zubair and the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib. What do you say about them? They asked. He said, Aisha to kabirun jurmuha, azimun ithmuha. Aisha, her crime is great and her sin is great. Ma min mihjamatin min dam there is not a blood, not a drop of blood that was shed on that day, on, the, on that day of the camel, in the battle of the camel, but that it is in her neck and the neck and the necks of her two companions. Okay. And brother, I had a, um, a second question, if you don't mind. Yes. So, according to... Um, do you guys consider Aisha to be an apostate or do you consider to just to, do you consider her to be um, a sinful Muslim? We do not consider her to be an apostate. We rather consider her to be a hypocrite, meaning that she had never she was never a Muslim. A hypocrite, their brother, is a person who portrays Islam, who says I am a Muslim, but in his heart he is not. He's rather, okay. he, uh, you know, hypocritically saying that I am a Muslim. But Iman has never entered her heart. Neither her, neither her father, nor his companion Umar ibn al-Khattab. We believe that these individuals were merely power-hungry individuals. Power-hungry uh, individuals who sought to deviate this ummah. And which they were, unfortunately, successful in doing so. Okay, I understand. But Inshallah. Yeah, Inshallah. Yes, there, brother. Thank Go you ahead. for answering my um. Thank you for asking my questions. I was just asking because you know I've been just trying to find you know um just like a lot a lot of questions that I've had unanswered for many years. I've I've started like finding them within you know Shiism. You so said just, you, said that you, were, you said that you were you said that you were a uh, a Bakri or a Sunni as you said you were meaning yeah, past tense. Yes. So. Yeah, so I, I grew up Sunni, but within within you know the past um, few months, I've been studying, you know, the different schools of thought in both sides of Sunniism and Shiism, and just trying to um, find which which side is the you know the correct path and which side has all the answers. And from my understanding, mm -hmm. um, the the Shia side has more logical answers than a lot of um, a, a lot of like answers I found in the Sunni side. And I've also found, you know, hadith and things in Sunni literature that, you know, support a lot of the views of the Shia. Because growing up, you know, as Sunnis, you don't really hear, you know, you don't hear too much about what most Shias believe. You kind of just hear about, you know, the, the, the extremes. Yeah. You know? So, 
with with that, I just started to study more, and then you know, inshallah, Allah will guide me on the right path, and I'll find you know the haq and follow it wherever I find it. Inshallah, inshallah, dear brother, I inshallah ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to guide you and to draw your path to Al Muhammad alayhi salam, the path of light and guidance, the path of the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What differentiates us, dear brother, is that we held on to the second weighty thing that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ordered us to, to hold on to. Where he yeah, said, wait. where he said, Ahsant. Yes. Where he said, Inni tarikum yeah. fikum thaqalain, I leave behind me two weighty things. The first is the book of Allah, and the second is my purified progeny or my progeny. They shall never separate until they meet me at the pond of Kawthar. What differentiates us, ladies and gentlemen, and dear brother, is that we held on to the Book of Allah and we went to Ahlul Bayt, salam, holding on to them, which insha'Allah shall grant us, grant us to meet the Messenger of Allah with our face illuminated. That we held on to his command. We did not kill Ahlul Bayt, unlike them. They, on the other hand, if you, if you read history uh, from their sources, read from their sources, you know what also differentiates us is that we often tell uh, the Shias and the Bakris or the so-called Sunnis to go and read their sources. Read Al-Bukhari, read Muslim, read uh, uh, you know, Tariq Al-Tabari, Al-Bidayah wa Nihayah, read the books of Fiqh, for example. Read their books. And from there, you would realize that Tashayya is the truth. You would realize that the truth does not lie in where you are. Especially with the Ahadith of Aisha about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa As no morally morally um, straight man, morally correct man would take the, the narrations of Aisha with regards to Rada al-Kabir, adult breastfeeding, for example. With regards to other things that I, do, I would not like to mention right now. Even Tawheed, even with regards to Tawheed, and this is the last point that, that we end upon, even in, in, in the Asl al-Usul, which is Tawheed, you would realize that our concepts and our versions of Tawheed are completely different. We take our Tawheed from the progeny of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, from the Itra, from the Ahlul Bayt. This is how we learn our Tawheed. On the other hand, they take their Tawheed from the likes of Ka'b al-Ahbar, a Jewish, a Jewish man. They take their Tawheed from Abu Huraira, Anas bin Malik, they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ayyadu billah has two hands, two literal hands, and they both of them are, are right hands. They believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face. Ayyadu billah. Subhanallah and dalik. He has a face, a literal face. He wears golden yeah. slippers. He wears golden slippers. And when he sits on his throne, when he sits on the throne, obviously the throne is literal. He sits on it, and when he sits on it, a large sound comes out. Lillahi atita. That's what they say. A large sound comes, just like Naudhu Billah. Imagine a, how can I yani, express it properly? Imagine a fat man sitting on a leather couch. You know that sound, for example. Yeah. It, that's yeah, that's Billah, what they say. They say Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Naiyadan Billah has Lillahi atita. He has a very when he sits down on his on his throne or when he gets angry. Naudhu Billah. A large sound comes out. I mean, nonsense, nonsense, these, these Israeliyats, these Israeli reports that have intermingled into their tafasir, into their books. When, it, when you come to us, you read, for example, Tawheed al-Saduq. Read Tawheed al-Saduq. Read the, the, the purified ma'in, the purified water, as we say, coming from the knowledge and household of knowledge, the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. A person came to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam asked him, What does Allahu Akbar mean? The man responded, Allahu Akbar means God is greater than everything. The Imam asked him, Before he created creation, what was he greater than? What was he greater than? If I were to ask anyone, even in the chat, for example, right now, I would ask them, what does Allahu Akbar mean? The often, the often understanding is what? God is greater than everything. God is the greatest. Oh, God, God is the greatest. Imam al-Sadiq asked his companion, what, 
what does Allahu Akbar mean? The man responded, God is greater than everything. Imam asked him, before he created creation, what was he greater than? And the man started to ponder and think. And he realized that he could not have an answer to, to such question because before God created anything, what was he greater than? He could not find an answer to such question. So he said, كيف نقول? How do we say, O son of the grandson of the Holy Prophet? He said, the meaning of Allahu Akbar is Allahu Akbar min ayyusaf. God is greater than to be described. لا يؤين بأيدن ولا يكيف بكيف. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. عما يصفون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in a position, is not in a place, is not limited, restricted to a time nor a place. You want to learn Tawheed, you want to learn and you want to hold on, inshallah, and you want to, inshallah, go into inshallah. the right path. The solution, their brother, their brother, is to hold on to the Quran and hold on to the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us to meet the Messenger of Allah on the Day of Judgment with our faces illuminated in following his sunnah and carrying his message to the nations, inshallah. Inshallah. Now, brother, um, sorry to, sorry, kind of brought everything up. But, um, yeah, sorry for disturbing your show and everything. You know, I just had these questions. I was just, you know, searching for answers. Thank you for answering my questions. No problem, but, um, dear brother. If you, don't, if you don't mind, I have just one last question. Go ahead. So, um, within, you know, growing up and everything, we often hear as, you know, Hanafis and, you know, Sunnis and everything, you hear that uh, Shias, they believe that the um, Imams are infallible. So, yes. So, I just want to know, like, is, like, what level of truth is there to this? And like, what evidence is there of this? Yes, of course. Um, as Shias, we believe in the infallibilities or in the, fa in, in the infallibility of the guides that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would set guides, they must be infallible. Otherwise, if they are not infallible, then they could fall into sin, meaning they're not guides. Meaning if we were to follow them, we could be deviated or misled because they are not infallible. We believe that they are guides. They are the successors of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Meaning, meaning that they carry his message and uh, are infallible from any type of sin or impurity or forgetfulness. They are divinely designated uh, guides for the nation and the same hadith that I've quoted to you dear brother uh, regarding the thaqalain the two weighty things that the Prophet ordered us to hold on to the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt the Ahlul Bayt in this specific hadith we can just by this hadith we can argue the infallibilities of the or the infallibility of Ahlul Bayt because they were matched with the Quran. Is the Quran infallible? By the consensus of the Ummah, the Quran is infallible. Without any doubt. With them being matched with the Quran, with them being matched with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and making them or holding on to these two thiql, these two weighty things, by by following them you will be guided. And you will reach the Messenger of Allah at the pond of Kawthar as the narration states by definite understanding, by definite cause or in, 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 in due effect, they are infallibles. They cannot have, they cannot be guides if they are not infallibles. By them being matched with the Quran clearly indicates their infallibility. Clearly. As the Quran is infallible. If one holds on to the Quran or follows the Quran, is Quran not the book of guidance? Is it, dear brother? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. Can the can the Quran lead us to astray, or or is, is leading is? Uh, yani can the Quran uh, lead us astray? Is it not a book of guidance? It is a book of guidance. It is masum. It is, and yeah. the infallible. It's, it's an infallible book. Therefore, with them being matched with the Quran, clearly indicates their infallibility. Inshallah, this answers your question. 
Dear brother. Hello. Assalamu oh. alaikum. Oh, welcome, Islam. This is um. I'm, I'm still here. I'm sorry. I had some connection issues. No problem. No problem. Inshallah. Inshallah. I've I've answered your question, and uh, it's it's a it's a it's an honor to have you on the show, dear brother. We have another caller, I believe. Do we have another caller, director? Um... Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you for your call, dear brother. Thank you for your call. We should have another caller shortly, inshallah. We'll briefly continue our research. So, where we were, ladies and gentlemen, is at the narration of Aisha, where she claimed that Sahla bin Tuamr, the wife of Abu Hudayfa, complained to the messenger about her Mawla, her freed slave, Salim. Stating that distress appears on the face of my husband, Abu Hudayfa, when Salim enters upon me. So the messenger supposedly said, suckle him. Sahla responded, he has a beard. He has a beard. The messenger once again said, suckle him. And what is on the face of Abu Hudayfa will go. She says, I did that. She circled him. And by Allah, I did not see I did not see the expression on Abu Hudayfa once again. We have another caller. Let's take it, inshallah, who's with us. Brother Ali from Salaam USA. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, dear brother? Alhamdulillah. Welcome, dear brother. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. I have some questions. Alaykum uh, as-salam wa rahmatullah. I'd, li I'd like to start off with the first one, if that's fine. Okay. So, I'm a Shi'i, uh, I'm a Rafidi, and I have a question regarding uh, Abu Lulu. Yes. Abu Lulu. Uh, so, my question is, uh, I'm convinced he's a Muslim, but I'm not sure whether if he was a Shi'a and his intentions were pure when he was killing Umar Okay. So, the evidence I've seen for Abu Lulu being a Shi'a was from Bihar and Nwar and uh, Mustadarak Safinat al-Bihar, which all don't mention a Senad either, or the Senad is weedy. So, how can, wh where is the evidence that Abu Lula is actually a Shi'i, not just a Muslim? Because I'm convinced he's a Muslim. But I want to know if he was a Shi'i, and if mm. we can send blessings upon from authentic evidence. Obviously, um, right now on the show, I am unable to bring you the narrations, um, but uh, if you were to message the number uh, on WhatsApp and uh, write your questions, inshallah, there will be a response sent to you. But be be nahwin am, yani in a general in a general um, answer, I will be mentioning some of the narrations in which I will be uh, resending it to you, inshallah, later on, yani specifically. Um, the narration of Amir al muminin Ali alayhi salam, where he says that uh, Abu Lula is a mu'min, is a mu'min. Uh, and, he, and he shall enter Jannah Raghman an Anfik, meaning um, he, sh he is a mu'min and he will enter Jannah uh, uh, whether you like it or not, speaking to Umar. And the intentions of Abu Lu'la, obviously, uh, with, re with regards to his Islam, it is known that he was a Muslim. And it, is, uh, it shouldn't be argued that he is not. As him being in Medina indicates to his Islam, because Medina was obviously forbidden for the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims could not enter Medina. And him being in the mosque, and it is known that a kafir cannot enter this sanctuary, which is a mosque, as he is impure. So Lu'lu'a, or Abu Lu'lu'a, Fayruz al Nahawandi, um, <coughs> Uh, was in the sanctuary, which indicates to his Islam. And the narration of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam stating, stating that he's a mu'min, and as it is well known, that a mu'min is not but a Shia, but a Shi'i. There is maybe not a specific, maybe what you're looking for, as in, um, because it's very little that we have, has reached us from Abu Lu'la, or things about him. Maybe what you're looking for is, I want to see whether he was a Shi'i imami. You may not 
um, find such things, or maybe to my knowledge as of yet, I did not find, um, you know, an, a direct source of him, of him saying, I am a Shia, Imami, etc. However, when Imam Ali alayhi salam says he is a mu'min, and a mu'min by the consensus of the, uh, of the Shia today, can only be a Shia Imami. A Shia Imami Muslim. The rest, the other sects, are Muslims. They are rather not Mu'mins. So that clearly indicates uh, to him uh, embracing uh, Shia Islam and plus his sister, or sorry, his daughter, Lu'lu'a. Um, we see that Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, or we see that Lu'lu'a was, was kind of somewhat in the care, in the care of Ahlul Bayt, or under the eye of Ahlul Bayt which means, uh, by Ahlul Bayt I mean Imam Ali. And we see that Imam Ali السلام, when Lu'la was killed violently and uh, oppressively by the son of Umar, Abaydullah ibn Umar, Imam Ali السلام, swore vengeance, for, swore that he shall take vengeance for the daughter of Fayruz and Nahawandi. And many other um, narrations that's yet, that I, I don't have them now presented in front of me, but I'll be very happy if you were to uh, send a message to the number displayed on the screen through WhatsApp, and I will be, inshallah, writing to you uh, a response with the narrations, volume and page number as usual, um, to which, inshallah, will suffice you with the answer, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Brother. May Allah bless and you. And I have one final question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, so we know a lot about the crimes of Aisha, Allah, but we don't know uh, much of the uh, like. For me, I don't know much of the crimes of Hafsa because they're not really spoken of. Mm. I know the. I know she was uh, among the people who poisoned the who set up the poison for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. But what other crimes does Hafsa have that you could mention? Hafsa Allah has many unknown crimes. Obviously, at the top of which is her conspiracy in killing, in poisoning the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa As the hadith in, in Tafsir al Ayashi says from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, where he says, Innahuma saqatahu, Innahuma saqayahu, they them to Aisha and Hafsa poisoned the prophets by the orders of their fathers Abu Bakr and Umar. Hafsa one of the crimes of Hafsa for example that comes to mind now is that when Aisha marched her colossal army of at least 30,000 towards Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam or towards Basra, and there was talk that Imam Ali alayhi salam was preparing an army, was making the ranks, ranks or, you know, making the required preparations for war, and about to set out. Aisha sent a letter to Hafsa, stating that I have, you know, I have. Uh, as under my under my uh, command ship, I have uh, Banu Umayyah under my 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 command ship. I have, um, you know, the tribes, the tribes, the known tribes, because Aisha's army was colossal, was a giant army. The people from or, or the army of Imam Ali alayhi salam was merely Iraq, Yemen, and you know uh, Kufa, obviously, Medina also. Obviously, a little bit. So the Ansar also had a good role with Imam Ali alayhi salam at the time. But Aisha, Aisha had men from Mecca. Because she set off from Mecca. She had men from Medina. Marwan ibn al-Hakam and Banu Umayyah joined her after Uthman was killed. She had a people who came from on, on the way. Obviously, her, her, her tribe, Taim, was under her flag. 
Adi was under her flag, tribe of Umar. She went to Basra and she go, she brought a, you know, she gathered a huge force from the tribe of Azd. The tribe of Azd is a very known tribe, a uh, big tribe in Basra, as well as Dubba, Banu Dubba. So her army was giant, was a colossal army, Biman al Kalima. So she sent a letter to, to Hafsa saying that I will, I will, يعني مضمونا, that I will cut off the head of Al-Anza Al-Batin. I will cut off the head of Imam Ali alayhi salam. The shaven, because Imam Ali used to shave his head. Um, so Hafsa, what she done, she went and she made a party in her, in her house. You know, music and, uh, you know, instruments. I made a party and started to do shi'r in cursing Imam Ali السلام, and insulting him. This is one of the crimes of Hafsa. And there are many. There are many. There are many more than this. But the time uh, is, is, is not enough and I have another caller on the line. Inshallah, perhaps maybe one day I will present a research with regards to the crimes of Hafsa. Inshallah. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us tawfiq. May Allah bless you, brother. Inshallah. Thank you very much, brother. No problem. Really no problem. May Allah bless you, inshallah. I believe we have another caller on the line. We should take him shortly, inshallah. Um, mashallah, there's a lot of callers uh, um, today, which perhaps we may not be able to finish the show, to finish the research. Um... We continue, inshallah. So where we were, until we take uh, another call, is that Aisha narrated from the Prophet to cons we we have another caller. Let's take him, inshallah, who's with us. Hassan from UK. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Welcome, Dr. Father. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah. I was going to ask you a question is because um, you were talking about the, you know, the being, um, the, the imams are um, infallible. Sorry. They're not, they don't make any, they don't make any mistakes and, and, and so was the Ahl al-Bayt as well. Alayhi wa salam. Yes. And, uh, I'm a Sunni myself, no. and as we know that, in fact, you know, being infallible is only being given to the prophets, and that's what is being given to the prophets. What we believe. No. So, um, that, what, what the question is, um, you know, Hassan and Hussein, that's, that's me and my brother named, mm -hmm. and my mom is Fatima Zahra. Mashallah. That's, um, that's, 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 um, yeah, I was going to ask you, um, do you believe that Hassan and Hussein they're infallible as well? Of was course. Was it only the prophet? That no, no, of course, uh, Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam al-khasa, the, the, the khas Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam are infallible. Who is infallible so, so everyone, so everyone can, can understand, inshallah. The Imams well, alayhim as salam, can't. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. You yeah, were uh, saying, um, go ahead. What, what, proof, like, what proof do we have to say that uh, Hassan and Hussein were infallible, like they're not, they don't make any mistake? I mean, like Hussein, he went to... To, to you know Karbala was it was it the right thing to do hmm. was it the you know the wrong thing to do so was he you know like 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 uh, like for example the questions I want to ask you mm -hmm. yeah so one then Hassan he he, hmm. he he gave the he gave the the the, the rule you know the rule into to Muawiyah mm -hmm. was it the right thing to do because he's infallible he doesn't make any mistake. Al Hassan alayhi salam did not give the rule to Muawiyah. This is an off, this is a lie that Muawiyah himself um, propagated. Let's call it. What Al Hassan alayhi salam did was make a treaty with him, a peace, a, 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 a truce, yeah. a truce. You know, when when two countries are are at war, and then there was a battle, a battle occurred, and then they made a truce, yeah. meaning to stop war, to stop battle, to stop bloodshed. That doesn't mean that yeah, Imam yeah, al Hassan yeah. salam, gave Muawiyah power or submitted to his power. Rather, it is not the, the case. And Imam al Hassan salam, made sure to, 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 to uh, <coughs> respond to the lie of Muawiyah. What happened was, as yeah. when, when the treaty occurred, or when the truce occurred, rather, it's not a treaty, 
was rather yeah. truth. Hudna in the Arabic language, hudna. The hudna, yeah. When that's when when the truth occurred, Muawiyah ascended the pulpits, and he said, "O oh people of 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 O oh Muslims, Al Hasan yeah. alayhi salam or Al Hasan has withdrawn from the caliphate because he saw me worthy of it or worthier of it." Al Hasan alayhi no, salam no, immediately yeah. stands up and says, "O oh liar." Oh, liar. Yeah. He, I did not step down or I did not withdraw my rights from it, nor did I see you worthy of it. Rather, it was to preserve the blood of the Muslims. Yes, dear brother. But what, 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 what proof do you have to actually sustain, you know, that there's evidence? With regards to Osma? As we know that, the, as, as we know that, we, as we know that the, there is a hadith about Prophet that he said that with this, He's talking basically, I don't know the hadith exactly, but he's saying basically with this uh, son about the Hassan, he's going to make like peace in between two people. He's basically he's talking about Ali alayhi salam and Muawiyah. No, he's talking about Al Hassan alayhi salam and Muawiyah. Yeah, so Prophet, uh, yeah, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, he was talking about Hassan. Yes, yes, Al Hassan. He's going yes, to do, do a great thing. Yeah, look, look there, brother. There's, there's, there's been a mixture of, of questions. You know, there's, there's Asma. We first went, then went for Imam Hussein, then we went to Imam yeah. Hassan alayhi salam. So we will discuss it, you know, uh, briefly um, and directly, inshallah. Um, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. Firstly, the imams have roles. They, 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 they differ to one another. The role of, of yeah. Imam Ali alayhi salam, or the duty of Imam Ali is different to, to the, the duty of Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, or Imam Hassan alayhi salam. <coughs> yeah. they, they have yeah. different duties depending on the times and depending on to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictates for them. They, we believe them to be guides. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has made them guides. Hold on, to my, hold on to my Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayti, Ahlul Bayti, Ahlul Bayti. No, but... Yeah, three I understand, times. Okay. So, so... Uh, Ali. Yeah, go ahead. My question is straightforward. Mm. Like, what what evidence? What what evidence is there the evidence. for us to, to believe that the, the imams are infallible? Yes, uh, the, know, the a, a clear evidence, basically. You know, the evidence. And Zakallah, khair, barakallah, khair. No, pr- no problem. The evidence. The evidence. Wa alaikum assalam, rahmatullah, barakatuh. No problem. The evidence that's which dictates the infallibility of the imams, alayhim is number one. What the Quran. What the Quran stipulated in Surah Ahzab, where he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Innama yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum urrijsa ahla al-bayti wa yutahirakum tathira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala w- wishes to remove rijs, sin, shak, shirk, remove any type of rijs from you. O Ahlul Bayt, O, o, o household of the Prophet, and purify you with a holy, purify, with a holy pur- uh, purification, let's say. Surah Ahzab, the note, the knows, Ayatul Tathir, that it is well known. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have to respond to, to this, uh, dear brother, and inshallah, I'll take the call in a moment, inshallah. Uh, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that's Allah, that's the Ahlul Bayt, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, removed ridges from them. The, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleansed them from any type of ridges, from any type of impurity, any type of sin, any type of doubt. Uh, from the Ahlul Bayt and purified them with a uh, purification. As well as... Obviously, my time is short, and this is a big topic, and I, I, I would love to have a discussion with the brother, uh, you know, regarding it, because the brother was going kind of to a lot of topics, as you can see. He went from Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, and then the Imam, uh, is the Imam Hassan also infallible, ila akhiri. So I'd love to have a nice discussion with him. Um, the other, quickly, briefly touching, uh, that indicates the infallibility of the Masumin alayhi salam, or the infallibility of the Imams alayhi salam. Through, of course, your works, through the Bakri sources, is them being matched with the Quran. It is the consensus of the Ummah that the Quran is infallible. The Book of Allah is infallible. Them being matched with the Quran, where, Allah, where the Messenger of Allah says, 
اني تارك فيكم الثقلين كتاب الله وعسرتي اهل بيتي I leave behind me two weighty things. It's the last command of, of, of the messenger. Stating, at the, two, two weeks after this, the Prophet was martyred. Two weeks after this, the Prophet died. Sallallahu alayhi wa It's his last command. He made sure to say this. In order for his people not to be deviated and misguided. He said two weighty things. Quran and Ahlul Bayt. The Quran is infallible. The Ahlul Bayt being matched with the Quran meaning holding on to them, holding on to them as, as a guide, as, as they are guides for you, definitely dictates their infallibility. As Allah and the Prophet وآله, would not order, order us or command us to hold on to people that may fall into mistake and sin. It is a logical um, argument here. Them being matched with the Quran instantly dictates dictates their infallibility and them being guides them being guides clearly indicates their infallibility ayat at-tathir affirms this and other so and other arguments that one can that one can present many narrations many many uh, sources that we can bring this is a in a general a general uh, answer Although it's sufficient, I, I see it's you know, completely sufficient, as, as is a logically, you know, uh, presented argument, a logically presented, founded argument. And I'm very happy to, uh, by the way, you know, discuss with your brother or people who have concern with regards to these matters um, in depth and until tomorrow, no problem. But not to move on from topic to topic like this. We, generally speaking, I like to stick and, and, and be... The, uh, you know, um, stick to the actual topic of discourse. You know, the first went from the Imams, Ali Muslim, then going to Imam Al-Hussein, then Imam Al-Hassan, and, and then Imam Ali, alayhi salam. All of these topics, these are very big topics. So we stick to one topic, and then we discuss what's around it, inshallah. And I'm more than happy to have your calls, ladies and gentlemen. We have another caller? Yes. Brother David from France. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, dear brother. Welcome. Alhamdulillah. Very nice to see you. Nice, to, see, nice to hear your voice too. May Allah bless you. Yeah, so I want to go back to the topic, uh, to the original one, to Muhammad Ijab and the other dais and the preacher, we can say. Uh -huh. um, I want to just slightly, no question, but spread the message to the Shia brother who are watching us also. Uh, the message I want to give is like, we shouldn't be impressed by these people, really. Um, I'm watching this about uh, from outside. I'm not that much uh, involved of watching the uh, speak corner and all those people. Uh, but from outside, these people they look very weak. I'm sorry, but uh, how come Mohammed well, Jabi go to university in, in UK? Hmm. Uh, is British people they become very retarded to have it someone like that? Uh, for me, really, it's, it's terrible. The, the level of his speech, even his debate, and so on. And the issue we have with this tweet, it just show him how, uh, this, how, how these people are. Really, I'm, I'm very shocked how many subscribers you can get and how, how you have a lot of people, they are impressed, they are following. Really, I'm very surprised. You know, we have a beautiful narration from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam yeah. or al-Baqir regarding the individuals, these individuals. It's very surprising that such individual will have a large following or yeah. large people, yes? Imam alayhi salam says, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ ضَلَالَةٍ إِلَّا وَجَدَ مَنْ يُتَابِعَهُ مَا مِنْ امْرِئٍ There is not one, there is not one who calls for falsehood and deviation but that he found followers. This is how it is. People who are follow, call us for deviation, call us for falsehood and يعني, a deviation from the correct course, they often have big, followings, big followings and large uh, crowd behind them. And the individual yeah. by the name of Muhammad Hijab, you know, he's, he's, he's an article reader. He doesn't conduct his researches. What he, does, what he does is he reads articles and he copies them, he copies the points, listen to them carefully, and then re-presents them with confidence. 
this self-portrayed arrogance that he and it must that he that he portrays because we all saw that debate with uh, uh, Shamsuddin in speaker's corner Shamsi we saw that yani, that Muhammad Hijab is completely different than the other Muhammad Hijab whom we see in the debates. Clearly, his articles, he was stuck to what he knows and he could not expand. This is the problem with Muhammad Hijab, generally speaking, that he sticks to, he sticks to his articles that he reads, doesn't conduct his researches. And when he presents them, and they, the person's certain knowledge he has, knowledge is able to respond, he gets stuck. He's unable to go from there because he's just memorized these things. He hasn't conducted the research. And as many, I've, I've noticed this even his debates, debates with some of the Shias in Speaker's Corner and, the, and, and other than Speaker's Corner, where he says, you know, things that clearly indicates that he does not conduct his researches. He's a copy-paster. Yeah. That, that's, that's, uh, that's the case, yeah. If, if you remember, there is, uh, there, he, he, deb he debated a Shia Bozer, like maybe some years ago. Uh, I forget the name of the Bozer. Really, the Bozer, he won the debate. But the, just because Mohamed Ijab is very tall, then he smiled, then he act like he, he won, but he didn't won at all. And the things with these kind of people, when you debate with them, mm. if you go to a point, they will not respond to you. They not respond to your point. They just take their point, they discuss on that, they don't want to discuss our, uh, in our point. Yeah, of course. They they would rather go to weak targets, go to you know individuals who, yani are they know them they know them to be either very weak in their creed uh, and not knowledgeable people, ignorance people. This is who whom they target. They would not target if you want to debate the Shia. You go to the correct way. You don't go to Speaker's Corner to debate the Shia. The Shias would would be above going into a clown a circus a circus you know like speaker's corner where every ill man mentally unstable man goes to speaker's corner and then vomits out what he dreams of at night as truth no we would not go to you know uh, to a place like this allah maybe 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 we'll be forced compelled to sometime in the future allah maybe it is our duty some, at some t stage to make a, a, represent a, re a representation there show our presence there. Maybe one day we will do this. However, if you want to debate the Shia, you go to the correct way. You go to the knowledgeable people. You go to the scholars. Or you go to the, to, to come to us, come to the minor land of Fadak. This is a, an open invitation, rather, to Muhammad Hijab and whoever who really wants to seek the truth, really wants to have yeah. a productive discussion in which there is no, you know, falsehood and no lies uh, that's, that is in between us. You come yes. to us, I'm more than happy, and the brothers in, 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 in the team is more than happy. For you to come, we guest you, we give you food, we, we even drive you back home if you wish. Just come and sit down and listen from us. Let's have a proper discussion. Let's have a proper debate. Away from nonsense and, and stuff like this. If you want it to be recorded, I'm, I want it to be recorded. Let's make it recorded. Let's let people see this. But for you to go to ignorant people, People who have no, even the foundations of knowledge they don't have. I saw one debate, um, it really hurt me, this, this word. He was debating a, a Shi'i brother, and I'm sure that he, yani, he, doesn't, yani, he, doesn't, he didn't mean it like that, in that way. Because he's trying to, obviously, you know, he's trying to do mudahana, he's trying to do, yani, he's trying to make, make things soft, sugarcoating things. So he was like, Bibi Aisha. Bibi Aisha? A Shi'i says Bibi Aisha? There is not a Shi'i that says Bibi Aisha, my friend. If anything, if when we mention Aisha, we follow, we follow that with damnations upon her. That's the Shi'i. <laughs> Imam um, uh, uh, Muhammad Baqir al-Majlisi. Allah al-Majlisi says in his book, in his creedal book, that it is from the foundations of the Shi'a creed to disassociate from Aisha, Abu Bakr and Umar and regard them as hypocrites and in hell. And that, that miskin, that brother, says Bibi Aisha. And he's debating him, and he's very confident. He, kn he knows him to be weak. He knows him not to have, not to be, not, he's no, he knows that he's not, you know, revealing his true creed because of certain, you know, um, certain restrictions that are there. Yeah. We have another caller, brother. Um, it's nice to hear from you. Uh, Thank you, brother David. You. May Allah bless you, inshallah. We have another caller. Let's take it. Inshallah. 
ان شاء الله ان شاء الله سو ليديز اند جنتلمن We await your calls, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be po posting or postponing this research. It's a very, very long research regarding this matter. It's more of an in-depth research. And this is what, what I often fall into, which I, I, I tend to you know, go, go at it in the right way, in the right course, uh, presenting an academic discussion, presenting an academic uh, you know, thesis and uh, where I don't have the full opportunity to present it all. So I'm, I'm going to basically put a halt to the research presented. But this research goes and delves into certain, يعني, uh, certain matters in depth, going from A to Z with regards to adult breastfeeding. The linguistic definition, how is it conducted, and what is our position from it. So inshallah, perhaps in a different time I will be taking uh, or presenting the research in a way or form, maybe a recording. But uh, as of now, I'm more than happy to take your calls. Do we have another caller? Atif from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Atif? Brother Atif, Assalamu Alaikum. Hello. Assalamu Alaikum, brother. Alaikum Alaik Assalam. Yes, yes, brother. You're on the live show, brother. Welcome. Okay. Welcome, brother Atif. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Assalamu Alaikum, there, brother. Welcome, there, brother. Welcome. How there, brother. are you? If you hear me, if you hear me from the phone, not from the TV, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually got away from the TV right now. Inshallah. So I, I have actually two questions. Uh, one is about uh, the infallibility of Abbas Alamdar. Like, do she e consider him as infallible as well? Okay. And, and, and the second question? Yeah. And the second question is, uh, do uh, she e believe in the Vahi continued after the passing on of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Sorry, the second like, question, I didn't get it. Yeah, like, do the Shi'i believe in the continuation of the Wahi? Yes. Uh, uh, revelation after the passing on of Prophet to, to Imam Ali and uh, Fatma Tazahra. Okay, that's it? Is that one of the beliefs? Yeah, that's actually my two questions, yes. Okay, thank you very much for your call there, brother. Regarding the first question um, about Abil Fadl al-Abbas, alayhi salam, the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, whether he is infallible or not. Infallibility in its known sense, as in a infallibility that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's an infallibility or isma muqtasaba, where a person is able to, he, he, he achieves infallibility by his righteousness, by his um, devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these maqamats, these uh, matters with regards to Al Abbas alayhi salam, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, um, they're often sensitive. Not sensitive, but you know, um, often spoken about whether if they are infallible or not. We believe that definitely Al Abbas alayhi salam and Sayyidah Zainab is or are infallible. Um, this is our creed. Uh, and with regards to the second question, regarding the continuation of Wahi, I will note it down because we have another caller. I will note it down and I'll answer inshallah. Let's take the second caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome. Hello again. Uh, I promise I will be quick this time. Inshallah. It's because I, it, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. But I know that I may take many time. And when this this topic came, I I had a question in mind because it's a known story. I don't know if we have narrations that that accept this this one that's in sunny books. It is that the you know 
the prophet told a woman to give her milk to a a man who was grown up yes to make him mahram to her and it, the explanation say that well he did not take the milk directly from her she put the the milk in in a recipient and then he he drank the milk not directly from her breast yeah and so that's perfectly okay right and this was an exception however but in the case of Aisha uh, she, she never got pregnant so she probably never had real milk so she only wanted men to literally suck her breast yeah. and she think that this was enough yeah the sister do you have uh, is is can you basically minimize the the questions or or the two the two questions that you that you've said in in uh, in a, in a sentence please yeah so your your first question is on the method of breastfeeding as they say that it is via a cup and a second question is basically did was aisha did aisha herself conduct breastfeeding or adult breastfeeding is that can is that your two questions Yes, she she actually did not breastfeed because she had no milk. Of course, yes. Okay. So but what what do the Sunnis say about this? They they make an excuse. What do they say? So so you so just so I can understand you correctly because there's some issues maybe with the audio. Um, so the first question is regarding their arguments in saying that it's it's via cup that they're saying that the female um, expresses yeah. milk from her mammary gland into a cup and feeding yeah. it to the individual. That's the first question, yes? Yes. What do we say to that? That's your question. Yeah. Okay, and the second question yeah. is regarding Aisha as to how did she, did she um, uh, breastfeed and how did she breastfeed when she didn't have milk, yes? Yes. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much for your call, sister. Um, there was problems with the audio, so I couldn't really um, um, understand uh, her, her, you know, the questions, but we've noted her questions down. Regarding, um, obviously, I'm, I'm happy to continue and take in your calls, ladies and gentlemen. Regarding the... Um, Um, regarding the first, uh, the question of uh, the brother from Canada, he said, um, he said that, uh, is, does the wahi continue? Has, or is, did the wahi continue after the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny? The wahi, wahi is a general term. Revelation is a very general term. Big term. There are many brown branches that comes from the word wahi. If you mean wahi in the sense to nubuwa, as, as in to prophethood, then no, this was not continued. That type of wahi was sealed with the demise or martyrdom of the Holy Prophet, blessings be upon him and his progeny. That was the last uh, revelation. However, there are forms of wahi. As we read in the Quran, for example, that وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَّا أُمِّ مُوسَى A revelation, and we, and we sent a revelation to the mother of Moses. بَلْ Rather, wahi was also uh, revealed to the ants, as per to the Quran, as per to the Quran. And also, maybe as far as I recall, also re revealed to bees. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ مَرْيَمْ The revelation, uh, and we revealed, or we sent a revelation to, to Maryam. Now the verses not, are not in mind, but one can easily research these, these, these uh, what I'm saying here. 
wahi in the known sense regarding prophethood, it was sealed with the demise of the Holy Prophet. Blessings be upon him and his progeny. However, the other branch, branches of wahi was not uh, sealed. And the Imams, والسلام, the guides which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divinely designated, were given a certain form of revelation. If ants can have revelation, if bees can have revelation, if the mother of Moses can have revelation, if Maryam السلام, can have revelation, by, يعني, أولى, by definite cause entailing that the guides which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated as uh, uh, you know, his, their representatives or his representatives on earth, they must be given revelation. As we believe that the Imams والسلام, each and everything that they do, it is by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their words, their actions, is by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Imams والسلام, say, Kalamuna Madmunan, that's in min nur in wahid. What they say, what their what their narrations speak of, or what what's what's they say from teachings, from actions, from commands, is from one light. Kharaja min indil wahid. Or min indil wahid. This light that the, the Imams alayhi salam teach is coming from the one and only, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qawlu akhirina ka qawli awalina. The last ones, this is the Imam Zalim saying, this is the, the, the narration, that's the, the speech of our, of our last one, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, is like, or is, this, is identical to the speech of our first one, meaning the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And the Messenger of Allah, where did he take his knowledge from? مَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not speak out of desire. Or he does not speak out of, you know, from himself. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ Indeed, what he says is revelation. So with regards to the ahadith of the Imams, alayhim salam they are a light, a revelation sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the, not the revelation of prophethood. Once again I say it. Well, not the revelation of prophethood. And the one who believes as such is a ghali. He's a mughali. He's an extremist. And we curse him. We disassociate from him. The Shias, 100% of them, by the consensus of the Ummah, say that the revelation of prophethood was sealed. However, the revelation in its, in its branches, in its branches, continues and is continuing. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not just leave his creation. Otherwise, by this statement, you are, you are becoming Jews. You know, what do, what do the Jews say? The Jews say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and he took a step back. No, the billah. He just let it be. He left earth. He left it. He left his creation. If the revelation is cut, everything is destroyed. If the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discontinued, earth would have swallowed its people. Meaning it's, it would have been back to نقطة الصفر, back to point zero. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave his creation. Thereby he sent these divine, or he designated by the, by, through the order of the Holy Prophet, through the command of the Holy Prophet, these divines, divinely designated successors to be as guides for the Ummah, to be as guides for the people. And thereby, uh, Insha'Allah, this answers your question. Regarding the question of brother or sister Gra Gabriella, she stated um, that they, the Bakris,
came up with interpretations. Because this, you know, I have a whole sect, a whole section that is over four pages long uh, in my research. <clears throat> Regarding responding, or rather even more than that, rather, regarding responding to this interpretation. They uh, really fell into Haysa base. They fell into a, uh, you know, they really could not, do not know what to do. They could not find a solution to their big, huge problem, which is Rada' al-Kabir, which is adult breastfeeding. So some, some came up, many came up with various interpretations. Some said that it is only specifically for Salim and no one else. This is an exceptional you know, ruling, especially for Salim. It's not for anyone else. The second ones said, no, it's for Salim and those whom are you know, in the same position as Salim. And some says other things. Right now, we, we discuss what they claimed. And this claim was by uh, Qadi Iyad. He said... And, it's, and, it's, and he said it, he did not say it specifically with, sta with staunchness, unlike Ibn Hazm. How he said it, he said a possibility. I narrate to you what he says directly. This is what he said, ladies and gentlemen. Sharih Sahih Muslim, or Sharh Sahih Muslim, in the commentary of Sahih Muslim, by Qadi Ayat, volume 10, page 31. قال القاضي لعلها حلبته ثم شربه من غير أن يمس ثديها أو أن يمس ثديها ولا التقت بشرتاهما القاضي عياض says perhaps perhaps she milked her mammary gland meaning her breast then he drank it without him touching her breast or having any form of skin contact. Notice what he says here. He says perhaps. لعله أو لعلها. Maybe, perhaps. Perhaps she milked her breast. This is, what she, this is what he says. He does not affirm it. Rather, Ibn Hazm, and skipping the linguistic um, the linguistic uh, definition of afrada'a, as the linguistic definition of afrada'a is very clear. As per to every academic research, you start with linguistics. But quickly, briefly going over it, in Mu'jam Maqais al lughah the known book of Ibn Faris, he says, Rada'a, al-ra'u wal-dadu wal-ayn, aslun wahid, wa huwa shurbu al-labani min al-dar'i aw al thadi the definition of rada'a, the definition of breastfeeding, suckling, is drinking milk from the udder of the cattle or the mammary gland or the breast. Meaning that the action of breastfeeding can only be and restricted to directly sucking from the mammary gland, not by drinking milk as this will not be called breastfeeding this will be called drinking or feeding from your milk the prophet said supposedly according to aisha like we said uh, we completely ex exonerate our prophet sallallahu alaihi wa from this obscene sordid actions of aisha and practices of aisha We do not believe in such. However, Aisha claimed, supposedly, that the Prophet said, suckle him. Breastfeeding and suckling can only be through directly suckling from the mammary gland. The Prophet is قوله فصل, as we say. Even Aisha claims this, that Aisha, when the Prophet spoke, he spoke clearly. No position to any type of uh, ambiguity, ambiguousness. Kalamukum faslun, as we say. The Prophet clearly said, breastfeed him, suckle him. He did not say, 
feed him from your milk. أشربيه من لبانك مثلا. He did not say this. He said breastfeed him. According to Aisha. And breastfeeding, according to its linguistic definition, can only be directly from the mammary gland. And Ibn Hazm, the known scholar, Madhab al Zahiri, he says in, in Al Muhalla, Al Muhalla al Ibn Hazm, the, the very known well book, and he affirms this with absolute confidence, unlike Qadi Ayyad. Qadi Ayyad. He says, لَعَلَّهَا Perhaps she milked it. This is possibilities that he's come, coming up with because he knows this, this, this hadith, this narration is very troublesome. Very, very troublesome. So, he brings these possibilities to try to soften the impact of the hadith. I have a lot, of, a lot to say regarding this. I have a whole research regarding narrators hiding this hadith and not narrating it. They don't want to narrate this hadith. They were very shook when they, when, they, when they read this hadith and heard this hadith. They said, I, I cannot narrate this hadith because it has any, any moral man who has preserved his morality would not be confident, would not at all allow himself to do such thing or narrate such thing or, you know, terweej for such thing, teach such, such things, such immoral, obscene practices. They know it's a very troublesome hadith, so they came up with possibilities. They came up with possibilities to try to soften up. However, Ibn Hazm, in Al Muhalla, volume 10, page 8, and he says with absolute confidence, it is not termed breastfeeding, but for what a nursing woman puts from her mammary gland into the mouth of the sakra. It's a very clear statement. It is not termed suckling, suckling, or it is not termed breastfeeding. You cannot term it breastfeeding or suckling, other than for what a woman puts from her mammary gland, from her breast, into the mouth of the suckler, i.e. the nipple. And it says, or he continues to say, and it is not termed suckling, but for the suckler taking the mammary gland, look how he, he, he breaks it down to make it very clear. And it is not termed suckling, you cannot name it suckling, but for what the suckler takes from the mammary gland and, and sucking it. He says you cannot name this action suckling, but for the individual Sucking directly from the mammary gland, and inshallah we finish with this with with this uh, uh, ruling by or this statement of Ibn Hazm, and then he continues to say, whatever varies from the aforementioned, whatever is different from what I've mentioned, is not breastfeeding. Rather, it is milking, feeding, drinking, etc. And Allah, the exalted and sublim, did not make this resort a mean for kinship. What you are saying here, or the, the, the dreadful, desperate interpretation to these ahadith that you've brought, is a very weak, desperate understanding. And it's very well, it's very glimpsable from the apparent, if one reads the history or, or reads the, the books of fiqh from this. They were in high sabayis, they don't know what to do. Each one says something. Ibn Hazm is confident. He says that it is not called suckling, but for a person directly suckling from the mammary gland. And whatever is... Very, uh, whatever that varies from this, from sucking from the mammary gland, is not called breastfeeding. It's called feeding, drinking, milking, etc. Uh, and he said that this is not a mean, 
This is not a mean, a resort for kinship. That's this, if one drinks milk, the milk of a woman, for over a year, for, for the rest of his life, every single day he drinks a cup um, from, the mammary, from expressed, expressed milk from the mammary gland, will not make, it, make her mahram to him. Will not make this a mean for kinship. It has to be directly from the mammary gland. We are forced, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we have another caller. Let's take the last last call, inshallah. Brother Mustafa from Norway. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Uh, actually, I have no questions. Sayyiduka Rasulullah. But I just want to say. But I just want to say, like, thank you for making, like, these live videos and, like, you know, making people educated. I think it's very benef beneficial. And may Allah bless you and may Allah bless your family. Barakallah feekum. Thank you very much, dear brother. Barakallah feekum. And hold on, before I go, I just want to say that every Umari, like, likes uh, Aisha smell. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear brother. May Allah bless you, inshallah. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Dear brothers, um, alhamdulillah, this, this, uh, yani we, we managed to express some of the points um, from the research. Perhaps I may be doing a video um, presenting this full research. It's a very long research. It's 13, 14 pages long. 13 pages long or 14 pages long, I go into very deep, deep detail. And I know these things are often very boring. Yes, people don't like to go to the extreme lengths of, uh, of subjects. We go from the linguistic definitions, then we go to what they said, and then we go to what their interpretations are. And we bring the statements of this scholar, we bring the statements of that scholar. And then we prove their distorts of Bukhari, for example. Bukhari clearly distorts these, these narrations in his, in, in his book. He does not cont continue them. He cuts them. He cuts them. And then we go into arguments and we go into further. It's a very long, long research. So I will be probably, uh, I must probably present such, uh, I'll probably be recording um, my presentation of this research. And I will be opening the chance perhaps next week, for anyone to call in regarding this topic. If the individual who refers to himself as Muhammad Hijab, brother Muhammad Hijab, if he wishes to come back to his senses, inshallah, firstly, come back to your senses, and um, uh, you're able, inshallah, to have a productive discussion, uh, I am more than happy to guest to you on the show, uh, via Zoom, for example, where you are able to express your thoughts and uh, have a discussion. Because you targeted your attacks and your asperses, your inner uh, conflicts towards يعني, you, you target it to, to uh, Albani. Albani is a miskin. What did he do? He merely narrated, or he's a merely a narrator to a ruling that's Aisha. Uh, stipulated. If you if you if you find this prob if you find this a a this this ruling this practice a immoral action, an immoral practice, you have to go back to Aisha. You have to target your words towards Aisha. This is the problem. And notice that all the narrations that speak of such incidents is through Aisha, and Aisha herself admits to lying. Aisha herself admits to lying in Hadith al-Maghafir, the known Hadith. How can we take her words reliable? Especially with an immoral action such as Aisha. And this incident is munhasira. It's, it's only through Aisha. None of the other narrators narrated such uh, a Hadith. All of it returns to Aisha. And whole research is presented in the book of Al-Fahisha by Shaykh Al-Habib, which I advise everyone to read, inshallah. We, inshallah, conclude this research, or conclude, conclude this episode. Inshallah, our appointment, or our mawid, is next week, inshallah, where I will op I'll be opening the calls, and opening um, the calls from the beginning of the show, 
uh, for people to input and discuss the research presented in another separate video. هذا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الحمد لله